Stock Pulse Newsroom, we are talking Silver Bullet Mines, SBMI, Toronto Venture Exchange, SBMCF on the OTC QB in the States. And I've got the VP of Capital Markets here, my buddy, Peter Klausi. So, uh, Peter, appreciate you, you taking the time here. And, uh, boy, this one this one hit good here with me. Uh, update here on the Washington mine here in Idaho, not yep. too far from home base here. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's run through the latest here for investors. Okay, cool. First off, plug for your Silver Summit next week. I'm kind of upset because I'm not going. Got too many things on the go, but a lot of people I know are going to Spokane, and it, it looks like it's going to be a great thing. So I'm disappointed I'm missing it. Uh, yesterday, we put out a press release talking about our Washington mine in Idaho. For the past three, four months, we've been focused on getting the mill operating in Arizona. Field team has been fantastic. The mill is now processing low-grade ore from the Buckeye mine. And we've been able to produce flower silver, which the engineers are shocked by. You've seen videos of it. There's silver coming off the table, and it's fantastic. All right, we got that figured out. Let's turn our attention now to the Washington mine in your backyard in Idaho. The Washington mine started producing in the 1880s, roughly, off and on. The old timers were chasing the gold vein, because when silver's at 70 cents, who wants the silver? but they meticulously mapped and blocked out where the silver was. So we know there's 120,000 tons of silver inside the attic, grading between 39 and 90 ounces of silver per ton. Now, for context, common wisdom, whatever that is, tells us that Bonanza silver starts at 30 ounces a ton, and we're grading between 39 and 90 for 120,000 tons. So yesterday's press release laid out the map for how we're going to mine that. And it's very, very simple. First, make it safe. Nobody's going in that mine until it's fully safe uh, and up to standards. Second, we have a contract miner engaged to go in and take out between 1,500 and 3,000 tons at a time. Let's call it 2,000 tons of that high-grade ore. Put it in a truck, drive it to a mill, toll mill it, and write us a check. It's a fairly simple, low capex, low cost uh, uh, opex form of mining. If we do 2,000 tons at a time, and there's 120,000 tons there, that's 60 trucks down the or 60 truckloads of five trucks heading down the highway, and us getting a check every time that happens. So we're, we're pretty happy with the plan for that. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's build on that here. Uh, I know in this uh, particular environment. Uh... A lot of Dorellans going uh going unrecognized. Uh yep. not not a lot of, I guess, uh, I don't know, success out there that I'm aware of. But this one here strikes me as uh um you have a you have a plan here of uh, mineral extraction and and putting money in the bank for shareholders. Yeah. So talk about that versus maybe the speculative side of the business. Okay, so Chris Ecclestone runs Hallgarten out of London, England. He did a report on us where he talked about the cult of the consultancy. Uh, Canadian securities regulators and North American securities regulators would rather you spend $4 million on a third-party engineer and have no money left to put in the ground than to put the $4 million in the ground and build a mine, build a mill, do the things you have to do to get into production. In May of 2020, the leadership team for Silver Bullet sat down and we had a meeting. Are we going to get a resource estimate on Arizona or not? Consensus was no. When we bought the Washington mine in Idaho, we had the same conversation. And again, the consensus was no. If you know where the mineralization is, go get it. Don't drill and get a consultant, then drill some more, then do more sampling, then you drill some more, and you're, you're out $4 million before you know it. Put that money where it'll do the most good and will return the most value to the shareholders. Uh, we used to call it the Pat Sheridan School of Mining. Pat is a legendary investor in Canada, uh, across North America. Uh, if you knew where the million ounces of gold was and you went back to him for more money, he'd yell at you. Right? Why, do you why do you want my money? You know where the gold is, go get it. And that's what we're doing in both Arizona and in Idaho. We know where the mineralization is, go get it. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, fast forward here to, I guess, uh, toward year end here, Peter. Okay. Um, what... Uh, what will be the what will be the status here for the company? Uh, I hate making forecasts because the twin evils of the pandemic and inflation have a way of messing with forecasts. But if we have both the 
Buckeye mined in Arizona, in production, processing at our own mill. And we're taking out those two thousands of ore at a time out of Idaho. The company should be in a very, very strong position, should be cash rich with low expenses and controllable expenses. Right? In, in Idaho, the expenses are very controllable. We have our own timber. So there's a, a gentleman up there now cutting our trees to make our posts for our mine. Those are very controllable costs. Um, so by the end of the year, we should be in cash flow. Well, it's uh, going to be music certainly to, to shareholders' ears. So, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, before I let you go here, what'll uh, what'll be the next thing we'll be talking about? You think? Probably moving into the high grade stuff from the Buckeye Silver Mine to process at our own mill. We've been, we've commissioned the mill; it's working, and now we're just getting everything fine tuned from the uh, conveyor belts to the crushers to the table. You want everything working perfectly, and you don't want to do that with the high grade material because then your tailings are richer than other people's mines. So we're working with the low grade material, pushing out Doré bars. I'm supposed to be getting pictures of the Doré bars any second now. Uh, pushing out concentrate. We are in advanced negotiations with a variety of parties for the sale of those products. Uh, and probably then, you know, and thinking with my mouth, probably you and I are gonna be talking about our first real sale product. I'll be holding up a check saying, look at this. Well, that'll certainly uh, be a milestone for the company, and we'll we'll look forward to checking back in for that. VP yeah. of Capital Markets, Peter Klausi at Silver Bullet Mines, SBMI Venture Exchange, SBMCF, and the OTCQB down in the States. Again, Peter, not going to see you here. It's going to bum me out, but that's okay. Um, but yeah. The beat goes on here, so keep uh, keep doing the good work there at Silver Bullet, and we'll look forward to checking back in when you have some more news for us. Thanks for hosting. Uh, I was looking forward to golfing with you next Thursday. That won't happen, so I owe you a round. <laughs> 